Brookvale. We'll see you then. Start by the Gold Coast team. They've allowed Canterbury back into this game. They do lead 12 points to 10. And Paul Vaughton, they got away to a great start, herring a couple of tries early in the match. Mainly through Canterbury's uh, poor to poor play, really, Peter. A scrum win against the head uh, for the uh, Gold Coast side. And here, Ray Herring, after three tackles, went over and finished it off. A great start for them. They led 6 0. And uh, from there, another Canterbury mistake later allowed the Gold Coast to score again. Well, some pretty ineffective defence from both teams. Canterbury early on, and we saw the Gold Coast opting to go to the kick a great deal. Craig Weston put up some tremendous bombs, and the second one of those actually led to another try after a Polamanda mistake. Yes, it did. Uh, Polamanda recovered very well and sprinted for his life to get out from that area. A great chase there from the Gold Coast players, and the ball accidentally punched out there by Mick McLean and Ray Herring on the spot to finish off 12-2 the Gold Coast lead. Well, it was all Gold Coast early on, but Canterbury got back into the game. I was critical of the decision from Terry Lamb. They got a kick, a penalty kick in front. He decided to take the quick tap as it turned out the right decision. Very brave decision by Terry Lamb, but one that uh, he made with a lot of conviction. It turned out the right thing to do. Polamana stepped in, inside some very inefficient defence there from the Gold Coast. Steve Jackson, the man at fault, and Canterbury back in the game one of those decisions I suppose you're either a genius or a dope in that situation Terry Lamb a genius and he was a genius once again involved in Bruce Maguire's try they saw that they had numbers out wide some good inside balls allowed Maguire to score out wide after again good work from McGrady coming into the back yeah, line well, Terry controls all their play and they spun it out wide and McGrady as you said don't let him get on the outside of his too much pace and Bruce Maguire finished it off very well and Canterbury are now back in this game I think they'll go on and win the game, Peter. I just thought they finished that half too well for the Gold Coast. And the Gold Coast have got a lot of problems with their defence. Well, plenty of problems for the Gold Coast, but they still lead 12 points to 10. A lot of football to be played in this game. I think we'll see a lot of points scored in this second half. For that second half, we'll join Ray Warren just after this break. The home side leads Canterbury Banks down by 12 points to 10. Peter Sterling, what do you make of those statistics? Well, what I make of it, Ray, is that there was very little between the teams with the amount of errors that they committed. Not much between the missed tackles, the line breaks, etc. In tennis, they talk about unforced and forced errors. There are a lot of unforced errors in this game. Both coaches will be looking to wipe that out of their games. And whatever team, as Tony Roy pointed out, Tony Ray pointed out, settles first. We'll go on and win this game. Start of the second half now. Gavin Hill. He brings it back for Canterbury outside his own 22 line. Jackson one tackler, Todd the other. Bruce Maguire. Scorer of one of the Canterbury tries, in fact, in the first half. Herring scored two tries. Weston kicked two out of four. For Canterbury, Collamounder and Maguire tries and Hill one from three. Lamb with the clearing kick. Peacock going back. Splitting through again. Tremendous open field runner. Oh, that's a great run by Peacock. Chance for the Gold Coast now. Cook away for Bartram. Todd. Fifteen out from the line. Thanks to that tremendous effort by Danny Peacock. Weston smothered out. Tronk it was that made a valuable tackle there. Wallens. Five gone. Davies. Off that left foot. Now they allow it to bounce. Scooped away. Wallens. Flicks it out the back. Maguire comes down with it for Canterbury. Desperation play there from the coast. They got the ball back. Now they, not that they've given a penalty away, taking the pressure right off Canterbury. Canterbury needed that. And a shame for the Gold Coast that it didn't lead to more points after what was a great run from Danny Peacock. There's the kick. Number 11, Wallens realised it is the last tackle. No six again. Straight back into the arms of Bruce Maguire. So all the pressure off. But two of the best return men in the game out there tonight Danny Peacock and Ewan McGrady gee they're, they're a pleasure to watch when they bring the ball back and complete that first defender 
Gavin Hill on the end of a real solid tackle from Wayne Bartram. Let's go over and take a comment from Tony Ray after the halftime break. A sent injured uh, Gold Coast forward Peter Gill into the dressing sheds to find out what was going on in there. He came back and said Wally Lewis passed the Gold Coast side just to pick up their intensity a bit. Their enthusiasm dropped off after scoring two early tries. He also emphasised the importance of a good kicking game. So they have got a good kicking game at the moment, but there's no chases, and you need a chases on the end of their kicking game. From the Canterbury room, if I was in there, I'd be asking my forwards to cart it forward, set up a good... We'll come back to you, Tony. Pat Moore... He gets his pass away for Lamb, back for Dallas. Pulled down 10 metres out from the line. And the Grady's call it wide. They won't kick, they'll look to run. And here's the Williams on the follow mounter. Now Trout, now the Grady, he'll score. Well called, clean up. The Grady does it himself out wide. 14-12 to Canterbury. Well, we don't see enough running of the football on the last tackle for mine, but Canterbury are one team who are prepared to take that chance. There you saw McGrady's arm go up in the air, pointing to his outside men. Terry Lamb in bold. Williams kept the ball alive, as did Polamata. Scott Tronk, good ball there, and open space. You and McGrady straight into a hole. But Jason Williams, he was the man who got involved in that drive. He made the initial bust once again from a Terry Lamb pass down the right-hand side. Terry Lamb backed up. Canterbury all over the Gold Coast. Well finished off there by Dallas, and the ball had to go wide. Some pretty poor defence out here by some of these Gold Coast players rushing up out of the line, allowing this short ball, this lovely pass there to McGrady. Steve Jackson should have just backed off a little, put some pressure on the man with the ball. As it was, he left the gap there, and McGrady too easy for him. They were always going to score when someone like Steve Jackson is caught out on the fringe of the ruck. If uh, you can get you and McGrady taking on a front row out there, then it's always going to be points. And there's the man there. As I mentioned earlier, one of the great ball runners in this game. He scored the points. And now Gavin Hill looking to add the extras. Gavin Hill's about 20 metres in from touch. Had a difficult night with the goal-kicking assignment. This one he gets, though. Canterbury turning it around. Leading now by 16 points to 12. Canterbury side of Bruce Maguire coming off the field. Got a nasty, nasty gash around his eye there. Well, Tony Ray, you were talking about the Canterbury dressing room at half time when we had to break in with that attacking spree by Canterbury Banks down themselves. Yeah, I was suggesting that the Canterbury forwards should just keep it simple, pave the way, go forward, get some good field position because there's plenty of strike power. As we just saw through Terry Lamb, who's the most dominant player in the game so far, who's probably the best player out on the field. And uh, he's got Euro McGrady to work with, so they've got a simple job to do, get some room for, and field position for those two guys to work with. Yeah, Tony, they're going to have to do something out wide the coast. That's the second time Canterbury has put a shot on them out wide and twice they've come up with tries. I think that was the enthusiasm Wally Lewis was talking about. Early in the game, they were rushing up, putting plenty of pressure on the Gold Coast, on the Canterbury attack, sorry. They just slacked off in the enthusiasm and maybe a little bit tired. Anyway, the replacement player out there in 25 for Canterbury in headgear is Darren Sender. Just got held out of the play there. He's come up with that tackle. But you'll note that the Gold Coast in defence actually play their wingers in behind their centres. And unless they read the play very well, they're going to continue to be caught out. They play in there and try and drift across, but sometimes by the time they get back into the defensive area, well, here's a bust made by the Gold Coast. There's Wallen throwing the ball, keeping it alive, picks up Wood. Unless they get over there and, and get back into position quickly, they're going to continue to be caught out. 35 metres out from the line, played by Ian Wood. Away to Ali Davies and now turned inside by Jackson. Ill-directed pass picked up by Terry Cook. Herring. Bartram gets his kick in. Up and down in the same place, really. Bounce goes back and favours Gold Coast. But that'll be the turnover with Canterbury not touching the football. And if they go wide once again here, we've got a 5-8 inside a winger. No centres out here at all. They're coming back now, but gee, they are leaving themselves short on many occasions. Centre. It's almost as if they're inviting them to uh, to come wide. Infield pass by Tronk. Gillies couldn't take. 
Gold Coast go ahead. They go over halfway through Terry Cook. Gillies is down injured in back play. He's been down a couple of times tonight, Ray. He might have a little bit of a problem. He's a pretty tough customer. He's getting back into defence now. Comes squatting into the, the centre position. Brent Todd. Three-man Canterbury tackle. Scott Tronk again was prominent. Davies, Weston. Now Terry Cook. Wider by Ian Wood. He only flicked the ball along the line. And tackled in possession as Robin Thorne. Cook a dummy half. Davies. And now Bartram. Bartram tries to step. But Terry Lamb's not the easiest man to get through. Away now for Weston. He goes to the air once more. Dallas was going to get under it, but uh, he was beaten to the punch there by the Gold Coast. And again, a turnover favours Canterbury. Pat Moore. Seems to be their only form of attack when they're in the opposition quarter. The Gold Coast is the, the high kick. Well, unlike the Canterbury team, who've got Ewan McGrady hitting in between his centres or outside the outside centre and the winger, we haven't really seen Danny Peacock get in, involved in that area. Some great return from kicks, but I think here's a man that they would be looking for. As Gillies comes up with a mistake, that's what the Gold Coast were looking for. So I think they should be looking to utilise Peacock in the back line somewhere. Yeah, what about the pass from Scott Tron talking about pressure? The man was covered by six players. Gillies is entitled to drop it. Here's Tronk. Look at all these players around Gillies. No need for that pass. Scrum coming down. 25 metres out from the Canterbury line. Weston. Cook goes back on the angle. Now Canterbury come away with the football. The referee has ordered a knock on. Terry Lamb disputes it. Well, talk about forcing the football here. First, well, that first tackle hadn't even been committed. There's Terry Cook trying to throw an impossible pass. Fortunately, it came off a Canterbury defender, and they will retain possession with the scrum feed. Gavin Hill leads the field. Yeah, he's been replaced by Mitch Newton, who goes into the front row. Davies, Weston, Cook. Ian Woods outside him, now tries to get back inside. Wood gets it away for Weston, quick hands for Davies. He's brought down on the 22 line. They've got to go wide left. Yeah, but they've got no one there, Ray. That's the problem. The goal case are punched. Bartram. Nine metres out from the line. Herring's the dummy half. Run around for Herring on Todd. Picks up Jackson. Jackson's eight metres from the line. Centre of the park. Davies. Weston. Cook. And also coming in was Clinton Moore. He's with the ball. Terry Cook, away now for Darren Wallens. Mitch Newton makes the tackle down low. Scott Tronk over the top. Five tackles gone. Terry Cook tries to cover it into the end goal, but it's too heavy, and it'll come out to the 22 for the restart. Well, that's a pretty poor kick there. Putting it into the end goal area, you really, it's a wide end goal area. You should be able to come up with a line dropout from the opposition. Canterbury now taking their time to getting out to the 22 metre line. They've been under a little bit of pressure in the last couple of minutes. Their line has remained intact and they still lead 16 points to 12. Doolan. This is Mitch Newton. Parramatta Jr. Mitch Newton. Linked up with Canterbury a few years ago. He's on for Gavin Hill. Brokenshire. They come the blind side for Simon Gillies. Taking a bit of a battering tonight, Simon Gillies. But he's one of the most improved players I've seen in uh, the city competition in the last year or so, Ray. I think next year and the years to come, he'll, he will be a regular in the East of Wales State of Origin sides. He's tough. He knows where to play the game, where to play the game, how to play it, and he's always in the thick of the action. Tap at the centre of the 22 for the Gold Coast. Brent Todd. Not likely to say you do it. He'd rather get in there and do it himself. Jackson offloads for Herring. Herring does the same for Bartram. Bartram's outside the 32. Tony Ray, you talked about the team settling down. 
you think that we still need to see a little bit more creativity from the Gold Coast team? They have resorted to the bomb an awful lot. It's not a bad tactic resorting to the bomb against the Canterbury side. We put the bombs up, perhaps the chases as while well he asked for at half time could be a little better because Ewan McGrady simply has not gone up for him. It's a good option. They just need to make their own luck by attacking a little bit more themselves. Another unfortunate error there for Danny Peacock. Second time in the match, he's knocked on. Lamb turning it inside. Ball to be played by Jason Williams. Polamounter. Gillies. Everywhere he seems to bob up. There's always two and three tacklers waiting for him. This is Newton. 102 tackles for the Coast. 98 for the Doggies. Follow Mounta. Ben Gillies. Jerry Lamb. Pat Moore's coming down the ground fast. So is Doolan. So is Lamb. Did very well there. Pat Moore decided to stay out of the play as he needed to. But Jerry Lamb ran all his, ran his players on and... That was a great piece of play. Some great enthusiasm again from the experienced player. Bartram. Todd. Jackson. Davies. Seven on seven. Polamata, the chief tackler. Five gone. Weston. McGrady will bring this back. Dances around Wood. Pulled down by Darren Wallens. He was looking for a bit of help there from his winger in Doolan. Looking to link up with him, but Doolan started on the blind. Now Doolan makes a good charge up the, the short line hand side. Well, good yards for Paul Doolan too. Lamb dummy half. This man is centre. Came on to replace Bruce Maguire, who is in the blood bin. Gold Coast player injured. Mitch Newton. McGrady was just in behind Newton, hoping to get a pass. Lamb away for Tronk. Here's a chance. Gillies, if he can unload. He does. It's gone to Ben Gillies. And he's up and inside the 22 line. Eventually, he was slammed into the ground. Five gone. Lamb puts the kick in the air. Is it too deep? Well read by Clinton Moore. Back to the 22 for the restart. The right idea for Terry Lamb, but just a missed kick. The Gold Coast, they're really struggling now to get out of their own half. Brent Todd, he'll take it up all night. And Bartram, he's, he's had a fair game for the Gold Coast. He's made a couple of breaks. Weston, McLean. With that Gold Coast player, Darren Wallens, getting some assistance to his feet. Ray Herring to play it. Weston kicking it down for young Dallas to come back. Gold Coast warming some players up on the sidelines. And his kicking game hasn't been as effective, Craig Weston, as what we saw earlier in the game. Well, they've come up with a, some football there, the Gold Coast against the run of play, and now look to capitalise on it. As Cook goes out of the dummy half, makes some good ground. That'll be a penalty inside the five. An important penalty, that one. Terry Lamb disputes. And he's telling the referee in no uncertain terms that he believes he's wrong. Got to be careful here, Terry. Well, he sent him onto the sin bin. He's put him in the sin bin. Now, a silly play, Terry Lamb. You might be the captain, but you'll never win. He was never going to change the decision. And certainly that hasn't helped his teammates. He's entitled to ask the referee what the penalty's all about. But I think it's the manner in which he was asking. Here's the penalty here now for offside. They probably were. I really don't think he took a questioning pose with the referee there. No, you can't do that. Showing disrespect to the referee and trying to make a fool of him. And the referee's telling him to get back and Terry's just standing there. No, I'm not going. 
and the Gold Coast, instead of taking two points, they've gone for the quick tap. Away they go. Well, they've got Canterbury down to 12 men. Ray Herring goes for three. Three metres out from the line. Away from the dummy half, they go blindside. Bartram, Danny Peacock. Peacock scores. Peacock gets the four points. Well, put that down to Cherry Lamb not being on the field. He allowed the opportunity against the 12-man team for points to be scored. And that just reinforces the fact that it was undisciplined play on his behalf. A good pass out from dummy half there from Steve Jackson. Lovely ball from Bartram. Then there's Peacock, the man who I was hoping would be involved out wide, running onto some passes, hitting the line and scoring the try. They had three on three here, Kander. We just see uh, that short pass is a beauty. Ineffective defence there from Dallas on the wing. Should have covered Peacock up. He's been their best player, Peacock. And Robin Williams, oh, Jason Williams, I'm sorry, was caught in no man's land there. He's an actor, isn't he? Well, there's no acting in that. And Williams also was caught out. As Paul pointed out, three on three. The two players ended up going on one player who got the football away. Robin Williams, I'd like to see him playing rugby league. That would be fun. Might be his middle name. Might be Jason Robin Williams. <laughs> Has anybody told Robin? Good morning, Vietnam. Conversion yeah. kick here from Craig Weston, Ray Warren. Very difficult one with the scores locked up. Yes. Two out of four for the young man. Can he put his team in front? This parochial crowd, they will love it if he does. They will tell you the story from a wide angle. In flight, not bad, but that's just wide. So, at the Gold Coast Stadium, 56th minute, 16 points all, the Coast and the Bulldogs. Construction time. What do you reckon he's saying? Tony Ray, he's up there and he's probably suggesting to them, you've got them down to 12 and you put four on. Remember that, think about it, stretch them to the extremities. He'd be very happy with the way they played the last few sets of six, exactly to his instructions, keeping it tight, taking it forward. Wayne Bartram's worked tirelessly all night. The little man, he's done some heavy work out there. Lewis now, I suppose, he'll be looking for them to spin it wide and take every opportunity with Terry Lamb off the field. Precisely, Tony. He could have been ordering a pizza. Now... That's Paul Galea, Ray, in the 26, another replacement player for the Gold Coast team. Important for the Gold Coast, even though they have run in some points against 12 men, they have to go forward before they go wide. Weston, solid tackle by Canterbury, three men. Davies. It's a good big kick. Turn McGrady around. Just look at the case they've lifted now. They know they're in with a chance to win the game, 16-0. They feel they can go on with it. And Canterbury now struggling to get back on side. Some players still walking back on side. Bruce McGuire is back on, sent up. Has left the field again. Young Dallas, he'll play the ball. Well, they're getting right behind them now, the crowd. Very vocal. Clinton Moore. Of course, that win today by Balmain was unwanted by Canterbury. And uh, they need desperately to win now. Mike McLean. Eleven competition points. This is round 13. So it would be possible for them to finish on 31. That would get them to the semi-finals. But they can only afford, in my estimation, to lose one game, possibly two. And they're flirting with danger here tonight. McGrady. I think with the 
evenness of the competition this year. That's what the New South Wales Rugby League was looking for when they introduced salary caps. Evenness in the competition, I think 25, 26 points. You'll be looking at playoffs for fifth spot. Yeah, well, you and I have talked about this and we disagree. I, I'm fairly firm in my belief it'll be more like 28. Follow out up. This is going to find touch midway, 22 halfway on the uh, Gold Coast end of the ground. Sideline comment, Tony Ray. The ball in the air is a real nightmare for McGrady, isn't it? There's a real skill in catching the ball. I know I can't do it. He's having real troubles doing it out there. Wally Lewis will be happy with that last set of six from the Gold Coast. They were coming out of their own end. They didn't resort to the old mistake with 12 men on the against you of playing touch football and throwing the ball around. They went forward well and got some good field position. 17 minutes to go in the game, Peter. It's all locked up at 16 all. It certainly is, and I think that's what we will see if Western makes half a break. From the Canterbury team, they were very, very slow coming to that scrum. They kicked for touch. They'll be looking to waste as much time as possible. They need to get Lamb back on the field as quickly as possible and have as least amount of action while he's off the field as they can. So they won't be looking to, to speed this game up to any extent whatsoever. And while Terry Lamb is in the sin bin, that fullback, Danny Peacock, he should be living in every set of six. Terry Cook, or oh, Ian Wood knows he's been tackled. Patmore got him a beauty. Now it's with Jackson. Little dummy by Steve Jackson. Five gone. We'll make hay while the sun shines, and here's Weston grabbing ahead, gets the bounce for Herring, back inside for Weston. Pull down, 10 out, turnover time. Gee, that little kick there was dangerous camp for Canterbury. Craig Polamana showed a reluctance to put his body in the line and dive for that ball. I felt he could have gone for it. Here he is now, it's on the ground. It was on the ground. He should have gone in and gone for that ball, but he didn't. And they carried on the Gold Coast. Just that last mistake there it was the sixth tackle, though. They had to try anything they could. Canterbury. 16 points all. Don't know that one point, obviously it's better than a loss, but would have been budgeting for the two points here tonight. Gillies. McGrady. He's looking at the Paul Borton's kick the score card. It's 16 all, 10 times. Bonanza coming to the Vorton household. I'll give this, give that some of the casino tonight. Peacock now. Terry yeah. Cook comes away. I guess I better come along too then. 22 metres out from their line. Ian Wood, uh, was that Ian Wood? Yes. Ellie Davies. Well, they can't afford to be too fancy the Gold Coast. They do have an advantage. They don't want to nullify that. That was a slips catch from Ellie Davies. He wasn't expecting the football. Get a good kick in here shortly, a good chase, and once again play good field position and hopefully force a mistake. Weston getting it back into the area of the ground where the Gold Coast wants it. Of course, we're getting into field goal territory now. And they've nearly weathered the storm, Canterbury, after allowing four points in. Only a minute to go for Terry Lamb. Doolan. Well, you know when the master gets back out there what he'll be trying to do. Looking at the timepiece, 14 to go. When he gets out there, he'll get it down there. Double quick time, hopefully, and shoots for the old drop goal. Well, we're heading now into field goal territory. Ray with 14 minutes remaining. As Patmore looks for space. Doolan. 30 metres away now from the Gold Coast line. Follow out up. He's taken over as playmaker. That's not a good kick. Put down by Canterbury, and it's going to be a knock-on. So it's the end of the tackle count, it's the turnover. He's back on, Lamps just trotting onto the field now. But a penalty against Canterbury inside the five metres takes the pressure off the goal case. And now they can work down into Canterbury's half, maybe look for this field goal. Davies or Weston to put it over. Weston taking... The kick for line. 13 minutes to go now. 16. 16 points all. 
Brent Todd. Again, strong effort from him. Leading the side tonight and leading by example to his other forwards. Jackson for Herring and then Davies. 40, 40 metres out, steady as you go. Away from Weston, Wood, the run around with Weston. Canterbury, surging defence, three of them again. Mike McLean. I feel that times watching McLean play, he's more dangerous coming possibly off a receiver, a little bit wider. He's got plenty of speed. There's the little kick. Doolan read it nicely for Canterbury. Whatever happens tonight, Ray, hasn't Wally Lewis done a great job here at the Gold Coast? Last year under Michael Cliff, they won two games all year. I remember coming here with East, we built them 30 to 4. But now, under the coaching of Lewis, they've turned into a much more competitive outfit. Any side that comes here knows they're in for a game. Mitch Newton to play it. Lamb across now for Gillies. Ian Wood has left the field. Young Donovan has come on. Penalty to Canterbury. Well, Terry will probably say, kick the line. Then we'll try and ruck it to the centre for the drop goal. Is this the world's biggest five metres or what? The referee's not even in the screen. Oh, how's he going? Tim Mander. The Grady, he went for as much as he could. 24 metres out from the line. Broken shire, almost going straight through. Lamb is sitting back. As if he's in a field goal mode. Well, if they are going to kick a field goal, you don't want to wait for the five or six. I think they'll try and score. Here he goes, he's faded from open to left-hand side. And Maguire gets a pass out the back for his captain. Lamb gets it to pull him out up. Now it's over to McGrady. The long ball's required, but he's been flung to the ground. Great defence by the case. They kept coming up in a line, and they forced them back 20 metres. Williams. Polamata. There's space out wide again. Lamb again. Oh, beautiful pass. Newton back to Trunk. Trunk is tackled. Five gone. Polamata's calling for it on the right. Run one blind. No, it's gone to Polamata. He's going to have a shot. A step around. He's missed it. Well, there's the score line, 16 all, with under 12 to go. Ray, they don't come any closer, and uh, not too much more exciting than this one. It's a real gripping game. I'm sitting here trying to decide who deserves to win it. Gold Coast have done everything right. They've played it simple football. They've followed their coach's instructions. But on the same token, Canterbury have hung in brilliantly with the Gold Coast. have had all the field position and all the ball in the second half. 26 on for the Gold Coast. Is that, did you tell me Galea? Or is that Donovan? Now, 26, 26 is Galea, 16 is Donovan. They made a couple of replacements as Weston. Well, he hasn't kicked the football well the second half. He's found touch there. But that's still, I believe, giving up a fair bit of field position. A scrum win for the Canterbury team. 10, 15 metres inside their own half means by the, by the sixth, they're going to be well in the opposition territory. There's Simon Gillies leaving the field. Had a great game, Peter. Great right. game. Well, he does look as though he's, he's taken a few knocks. I'm surprised he stayed out there that long, but gee, he is a competitor. I think at the first start about Simon Gillies, he's played in several matches when he's been wounded, but it's only a further tribute and a mark of his character. Jason Williams doing some light stepping away from Donovan. Pulled down by Weston. Lamb. Centre is back on the ground in 25. They've got to watch Terry Lamb on these blind sides. He's creating numbers for them. Here he does it again with Tronk. Good hands from McGrady. Keeps the ball alive. He's dived on by Patmore. But that's where they're dangerous. Hitting the blind side, running off Lamb. Doolan's the dummy half. Lamb at first receiver. Doolan's on the run-around mission. 35 metres out from the Gold Coast line. Canterbury rucking it towards the centre of the park. Maguire. Five tackles gone. They're too far out for the drop goal. Polamounter turns it all blatantly forward. 
That's the turnover. Well, he looked like an American quarterback there. Look for his player downfield. And there he was. That's a mile forward. Should have been a penalty to the goal coach, Well, that's Pete. right. Whatever Offside. happened to that rule? Whatever happened to that rule? It's like the five-meter rule. It's like the kickoff rule. Every kickoff you see these days, men are four or five meters in front of the kicker. Out the window. Bartram picked up and put on the ground. Todd. Right on the halfway mark. Away from Davies onto Weston. Lamb, he did a good job to get away from Lamb. Got it back for Davies. Davies gets away from another. Takes it back to where it all started, right on the halfway mark. Now they go, oh, that's forward from the dummy half to McLean. Allowed to go by referee Manda. Up the blind side goes Ray Herring. And now he's uh, been able to find touch. Just outside the 22, Canterbury's end of the ground. Well, there we see Herring scoot out of the dummy half. Got a little kick in there. I, I don't see a great deal of sense in that play. I must admit, it doesn't put any pressure on the opposition. It's given them possession, and they're not down on their own line. No result, no cost. Six and a half minutes to go in the game. McGrady. Patmore goes inside, runs into a hole, pulled down by Weston. One of the biggest tackles of the game, that one. Patmore's got plenty of speeds. We saw against Cronulla last week. The Canterbury making good yards now into the final couple of moments. They're going to be the team that looks like they're going to have a field goal attempt or a shot at scoring the try to win this match. Centre to play it. They're 40 metres out. Scott Tronk. They're looking to come back this side once again. Liam McGrady involved. And there is some space out here. Pull them out up. Lamb. Lamb holding it back and pushing it wide for Williams. Inside for McGrady. McGrady's pass goes over the sideline. Well, has it come off the Gold Coast player? The Canterbury team appealing that it, that it has done. This is a big decision, this one, as to who gets the feed. There's McGrady. Looks for support as the Gold Coast player touched it. No, he hasn't. Davies to work the scrum for the Gold Coast. 16 points all. Five and a quarter minutes to go. Tomorrow, incidentally, we're down at Campbelltown Stadium for the Panthers and the Magpies. Weston. On his own 22. The stage of the match, it must seem like a mile back up to the other end of the ground where they've got to be. Played there by McLean. Todd shows it inside. Picks up about five metres, but they're still inside the 32. This is Jackson. Five tackles gone now against the Seagulls. And Steve Jackson, unable to play the ball at the moment. Weston, asking Peacock to send it back down the ground. Young Dallas comes back with the football. Mike McLean is off the field for the coast now. Gavin Hill. One-handed away for Paul Amada. Well, Young follow Mounter does well. Maguire away for McGrady. They've got a chance out wide. Catmore can't get the pass away. I think they've got to forget about scoring a try now, Ray, with, what, four minutes remaining. They must work for the field goal. Terry Lamb, he's a specialist. Follow Mounter, Mitch Newton. Lamb's on his outside. Maguire the inside. He's with the ball. Maguire not held. Plays the ball. Now it's with Lamb. Lamb to the 22. Young Dallas is going for the turn. points to 16 in favour of the Bulldogs. And what an important try that may well turn out to be for the Canterbury team. It's wrapped this game up, but who, who threw the football? Have a look at this. That's where he's dangerous. The blind side of the ruck, Terry Lamb, got numbers, the long pass. Dallas outside, Cook. Plenty of speed from this man from North Queensland. We saw him score one in the same spot last week. He's got another one tonight at a different ground. Yeah, Terry Lamb wasn't concerned about the field goal. The redhead flash down that touchline. Beautiful to watch. Nothing like a redhead scoring a try, Fatty. Oh, it's a beauty. 
Terry Lamb. A good decoy by Jason Williams. He kept going through to draw a man. And Dallas finishing off in grand style. That'll wrap it up for Canterbury. Well, I've just got to wonder whether Cook was actually playing on the wing there or whether the bloke was, was inbound somewhere, maybe doing a little bit of defence in, inside because he was certainly needed out there. Cook was caught in no man's land. Dallas outside him. He has got to turn the speed, this kid. He certainly can fly and he can get to top pace very quickly. He picked up a try against Cronulla last Saturday night. We had the pictures of Chris, Chris Anderson and all the officials clapping. They were sharing in the enjoyment of young Dallas. Now from the sideline, Gavin Hill. He's got the length, but he hasn't got the direction. 20 points to 16 with under two minutes of time remaining. One of those clocks is wrong, either the one I'm going off at the ground or when we shoot it for you just there, maybe there's a fraction longer to go. I don't think so though. Dallas plays the ball. He'd be feeling good, Pete. Well, he's got every right to feel good. We saw him put in a very tough situation last week coming on in the first couple of minutes after Darren Smith was knocked out. Well, here's the Gold Coast. They've got possession. That's a big play there from Steve Jackson. Can they do something about it? That's Michael Jenkins playing the football. They've got a big fan out wide. Goes through Todd. He's got men outside. West and the dummy. Back inside for some good defence. As the Gold Coast keep it alive. They're losing ground. They are indeed. Peacock picks it up on the bounce. Peacock strains to get away from the tackle. Pulled down 22 out. Now it's away for uh, Donovan, I think it is, in 16. Gets a pass away for Peacock. Peacock tackled. 22 metres out. And what are the odds of going to the air last tackle if they don't score? Davies. Away now for Donovan. Donovan gets it away. Weston's pass knocked down by Canterbury. This should be six more, but Canterbury come up with it. And the scrum will barely have time to pack. 20 seconds remain on the clock. Canterbury still under pressure. That pass knocked down by Doolan. Came off his chest, not his hands. One last chance for the coast. Ten I'd seconds be, to go. I'd be kicking over the top. I'd go to you and McGrady and drop one in behind. Weston pushes the ball through the hands. It's gone out to Clinton Moore. Moore pulled down inside the 22 line. Sirens should be sounding in a matter of seconds. So, it's all over. The siren did sound. I don't know that Tim Mander heard it. Had to be alerted to it, and the game comes to its end with Canterbury winning. But what a cliffhanger it was, and a disappointed Wally Lewis. Why wouldn't he be? They were competitive, they certainly were entitled to a point. But the doggies get home and they keep their semi final hopes alive 20 to 16. They win, incidentally, Gold Coast. That's the fourth time this season they've been beaten by six points or less. We'll take a break and come back to wrap it all up for you from the Seagull Stadium in just a moment. Stadium where we witnessed a very nail-biting finish to the game between Canterbury and the Gold Coast. 20 points to 16, the Bulldogs home. A late try by rookie winger Brett Dallas getting them the points tonight. In the dressing room now, a very steamy dressing room, is Ray Warren with our MMI Man of the Match. Yeah, pretty steamy down here, Pete. Thanks very much. Scott Tronk is our man of the match, $1,000 from MMI. Scotty, you've covered plenty of territory in pursuit of rugby league. It seems you've found a, a pretty happy hunting ground with Canterbury. Yeah, it's, you know, I really enjoy Canterbury now. I've found my niche in life and um, uh, things are going well. It's been a bit of a, a tough start to the season, but I've uh, kind of played myself back into form. So, you know, the guys tonight were just great. It was... And I guess you'd agree with the popular theory now that there's no match easy in the Winfield Cup and one of them is coming to the Seagull Stadium. That's never easy. No, that, that was going to be our hardest game, you know, to put three together. We got a three or four together. We got a, we had to beat Seagulls tonight because, you know, they've been beaten ten, getting beaten by two points and uh, they were a tough match tonight. Scotty, congratulations again. Thanks a lot. Thanks, MMIT. Thanks. There he is, Scott Tronk, our man of the match. Back to you, Pete. A very worthy winner there, Scott Tronk. A lot of work done in the middle of the rucks, rucks for the Bulldogs. Footy tab on tonight's game, another healthy dividend, $108.25 for that 20-16 to 16 scoreline in favour of Canterbury. The 
Point score table, Brisbane still leading the competition, but important wins today for Balmain and Canterbury. They move into contention for that final five. Six games tomorrow to round out round 13 of the Winfield Cup. Cronulla and North at Caltex, Canberra St George at Bruce, East Manly at the Sydney Football Stadium, Parramatta and Brisbane at Parramatta Stadium, Newcastle South at the Marathon Stadium. And our match of the day comes from the Campbelltown Stadium, Western Suburbs up against the reigning Premiers Penrith. Obviously a very tough match for them after what's been a very traumatic week for the club. On Tuesday night, we're back to the Seagull Stadium. The tourists once again in action. They're against the Gold Coast Seagulls. Check your local guides for that game. And coming up next, of course, our exclusive coverage of the Wimbledon Tennis Championship. Day six, some great action on centre court. World number one men's player Jim Courier and Gabriella Sabatini in the women's. We'll, of course, be following the progress of the only Australian women's player left in the competition, Kristen Godridge. So plenty of sport coming up on the wide world of sports. We are back here next Tuesday night, coming into that third test match, Australia and Great Britain. Very important game for the tourists on Tuesday to keep that, that, that momentum going that they established in a big win last Friday night against the Australians. So on behalf of Ray Warren, Paul Voughton, I'm Peter Sterling. We wish you a very good night. This has been another presentation from Nines Wide.